You ready? Say go. Why you have yourself another turkey? Hope it's a smart one. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. They're saying, they're saying President Roosevelt, he's dead. The president, stricken by a cerebral hemorrhage, passed from unconsciousness to death on the 83rd day of his fourth term and in an hour of high triumph. The armies and fleets under his direction as commander-in-chief were at the gates of Berlin and the shores of Japan's home islands as Mr. Roosevelt died. And the cause he represented and led was nearing the conclusive phase of success. Less than two hours after the official announcement, Harry S. Truman, vice president, took the oath as the 32nd president of the United States. She goes down okay. idolize that man. It's the only president Pug ever really knew. You know, we went through so much together. The depression, the war. I just can't believe he's gone. What you thinking, Tom? Radio waves. Radio waves? When I was a kid, my daddy and I built a crystal set. You know, just a board, four nails, piece of wire, crystal. Cost me 10 cents. I had to save for a solid two months. I had to set old Bakelite headphones somebody gave me. You had to run a wire across a crystal. Yeah, it real still. Then you can get one. Somebody's voice. That's how I first heard him. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Mm-hmm. I remember one time he said... We are committed to full support of those peoples everywhere who are resisting aggression. Oh, it just sort of stuck with me. It's good words. Noble words. You know, they say radio waves never die. All those voices, all those thoughts, Ideas and songs. Might just be bouncing around the stars out there. Like souls. I keep thinking about his wife. She's sleeping now. Tomorrow she's going to wake up. Just for a moment she won't remember. It'll be like... You're cold. You want my jacket?
going. Night, Tom. Night, Ruby. <sighs> Nothing was said, but after that day, my mother seemed to push harder in the fields. I have often wondered if she was preparing a place to plant her grief or moving on to face a truth that she could not bear to be true. It was mighty hard work for one broken man, a woman, and a girl. But as the weeks went by, bit by bit, with Tom's help, we took back control of the land. And with it began the slow process of reclaiming our lives. As for me, I think I had already moved on, allowing Tom to move so naturally into that place that had been empty for so long. Sing it to me again. All right. Long John Silver went to sea with a cask of veil upon his knee. Hey, in a brush and a comb and a screen shot of bone in a... Looking glass? In a looking glass. Um, I'll never get it. Yeah, you will. All right, look. I'm going to dig here. Go over that shady spot there. Looks like a good place for worms. Okay. You afraid of worms? No, sir. Pug? 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 It's a clean shot, boss. Clean. Morning, Tom. Morning. You met my boys? This is Len Upshaw. His son, Charlie. Pug. Well, Miss Opal. Are you two doing some fishing? Just, uh, beyond that. We can kill. One through the eye. Best way. Quick. Yeah. Let's keep going. Oh, uh, that piece of the lake's on my land. That ain't good fishing. Ruby needs dinner. I'll send up some of this deer meat. Ruby makes a wonderful venison stew. You had that stew, boy? I said you had that stew? No, sir, not yet. It's wonderful. Carrots, onions, thick gravy, cornbread. Many's a Sunday supper. Ruby had me up for that stew. Look forward to being invited again. I'll tell her. I'd appreciate that. This is a much better spot, anyhow. Yeah. Don't seem like Mr. Green likes you much, Tom. Well, I don't suppose there's much I can do about that. I think it's on account of he likes Mama. Long John Silver went to see her. The casco veil upon his knee with a brush and a comb and a scrimshaw bone and a looking glass and a... a trunk of brass and a pipe and a bowl and a bag of gold. And a parrot named Polly Wally Wiggins. <laughs> Long John Silver went to see you. The casco veil up on his knee. But the crew went slack, so he never came back. Neither did Polly Wally Wiggins. Late that April, in a little red schoolhouse in a place called Reims, the German army surrendered unconditionally, and the war in Europe ended. It was a quiet victory for us. The war in the Pacific, where Daddy was, still dragged on. And on the home front, we had our own battles beginning. <laughs> 